Good Sunday evening to you and welcome to worship at Christ Lutheran Church. Visitors, a very warm welcome to you. Members, thank you for joining us in worship. I know that uh, many of you cannot be here for different reasons and that's okay. We're, we're really happy about that because you can still worship with us online and we thank God for this. And uh, it's really an honor to have you join us. Thank you for the feedback you're giving. Thank you for the communication. Thank you for the prayers. Stephanie and I love you deeply and your whole con uh, family here at Christ, we love you too. Uh, I want to thank you for your continued support of our ministry and your generosity and also your prayers. Thank you for that as we continue to do ministry and mission in our community. Those things never end. Helping people, loving people, serving people, reaching out to people does not end and your generosity continues uh, to allow that to happen. So thank you very much for allowing God to operate in your life this way. Once again, we're uh, doing our live worship and combining that with some pre-recorded information or parts of the service for you. We are working out all the sound issues you, so be patient with us, but we think they're going to be better this week. Don't forget that as we go throughout the week, at five o'clock every day, we will be either with you through my devotion, Stephanie's time with you, or this worship service on Sundays. So we're really glad about that. If you want communion, please call me, email me, or text me. We have ways of arranging private communion for you with a safe environment to keep you healthy. I'd love to do that for you. Let me know, and we'll take care of that. Once again, we're really glad that you are here with us in worship. I thank God for you and praise him for you. I love you very much. May the Lord bless your worship with us this evening. Today your mercy calls us to wash away our sin. However great our trespass, whatever we In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O oh, give thanks to the Lord, for his love endures forever. O oh, Lord, open my lips, and my mouth will declare your praise. Make haste, O oh God, to deliver me. Make haste to help me, O oh Lord. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. 
We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ. Have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy upon you and has given his one and only Son, Jesus Christ, to die for you and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ's church, by his authority and at his command, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. Hi, everybody. Welcome to Children's Message. It's so good to see you. It's me. It's not Sonny. It's me. I'm behind Sonny. Well, anyways, I brought Sonny today as a special guest. Today, we're talking about something in Scripture that says you are precious to God. In fact, he says you're a precious treasure of mine. Sonny's pretty precious to me. I like to take care of him, and I love him, and I squeeze him, and I call him Sonny, and he's my friend, and he's so special to me. Do you guys have anything that's special to you? Maybe it's a favorite toy? Hmm. Maybe it's a, a, a pet, like a dog? Mm -hmm. Maybe it's a, a, your, your favorite food? I don't know. Maybe it's your mom or dad? Maybe it's a brother or sister. Maybe, I don't know. My, my sister certainly wasn't a precious treasure to me when I was young, but now she is. And so that's a pretty special thing. But when we have these special precious treasures in our life, we take care of them, right? We keep them clean and we love them and we make sure they don't get hurt and we make sure they don't get broken. And if it's a pet, we feed the pet and we walk the pet and we clean up after the pet. If it's our brother or sister or mom or dad, we love them and we help them and we, we do all these things because they're so precious to us in the very same way. In fact, even more so, you are precious to God. Yes, you are. You and you and you and even you way back there. You're precious to God. So precious that every day of your life, he not only takes care of you and gives you everything you need, but he holds you in the palm of his hand and he says, I am with you. You are mine. I will keep you safe. I will love you. I will forgive you. I will walk by your side. And you will always be with me forever and ever. And nothing can take you from my hand. So precious that he gave his only son, Jesus, to die for you and to rise for you so that you will be with him in heaven forever. Sometimes this world can be pretty mean to us, can't it? Sometimes we may feel like, well, I guess I'm not very special. But don't let that be the truth. Because the truth is you are special. More special than Sonny, more special than anything in the world. Because you belong to God. And he says, you are my precious treasure. Remember that always. I love you guys. Thanks for joining me. Sonny says thanks too. Have a great day. Love you. Bye-bye. They set out from Rephidim and came into the wilderness of Sinai, and they encamped in the wilderness. There Israel encamped before the mountain, while Moses went up to God. The Lord called to him out of the mountain, saying, Thus you shall say to the house of Jacob, and tell the people of Israel, You yourselves have seen what I did to the Egyptians, and how I bore you on eagles' wings, and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will indeed obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my treasured possession among all peoples, for all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. There, these are the words that you shall speak to the people of Israel. So Moses came and called the elders of the people and set before them all these words that the Lord had commanded him. All the people answered together and said, All that the Lord has spoken we will do. And Moses reported the words of the people to the Lord. This is the word of the Lord.
The epistle lesson today is from Romans chapter 5. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. For one will scarcely die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person one would dare even to die. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Since, therefore, we have now been justified by his blood, much more shall we be saved by him from the wrath of God. For if while we were enemies we were reconciled to God by the death of his Son, much more, now that we are reconciled, shall we be saved by his life. More than that, we also rejoice in God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have now received reconciliation. Therefore, just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. For sin indeed was in the world before the law was given, but sin is not counted where there is no law. Yet death reigned from Adam to Moses, even over those whose sinning was not like the transgression of Adam, who was a type of the one who was to come. But the free gift is not like the trespass. For if many died through one man's trespass, much more have the grace of God and the free gift. By the grace of that one man, Jesus Christ, abounded for many. This is the word of the Lord. We stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew, the ninth chapter. <clears throat> and Jesus went throughout all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the gospel of the kingdom, and healing every disease and every affliction. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore pray earnestly to the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. And he called to him his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal every disease and every affliction. The names of the twelve apostles are these. First Simon, who is called Peter, and Andrew his brother, James the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out, instructing them, Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And proclaim as you go, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the leper, cast out demons. You received without paying, give without pay. Acquire no gold, nor silver, nor copper for your belts, no bag for the journey, nor two tunics, nor sandals, nor a staff, nor the laborer deserves his food. And, for the laborer deserves his food. And whatever town or village you enter, find out who is worthy in it, and stay there until you depart. As you enter the house, greet it. If the house is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if the house is not worthy, let your peace return to you. If anyone will not receive you or listen to your words, shake the dust off from your feet when you leave that house or town. Truly I say to you, it will be more bearable on the day of judgment for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah than for that town. Behold, I am sending you out as sheep in the midst of wolves. So be wise as serpents and as innocent as doves. Be aware of men, for they will deliver you over to courts and flog you in their synagogues, and you will be dragged before governors and kings for my sake, to bear witness before them and the Gentiles. When they deliver you over, do not be anxious how you are to speak or what you are to say, for what you are to say will be given to you in that hour. For it is not you who speak, but the Spirit of your Father speaking through you. This is the Gospel of our Lord. Having heard the gospel of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, we join together with confidence and boldness in confessing our Christian faith with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, 
who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Oh
All right. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be pleasing to you, our rock and our redeemer. In the name of Jesus, amen. So I don't know about you, but 2020 has been one heck of a year so far, hasn't it? <laughs> I mean, you know, things started to go pretty well. Well, for Steph and I, it was pretty stressful because we were moving right at the beginning of the year, right? And then we had that car accident. And then we get out of that, we move on, and things seem to settle out. And then all of a sudden, there's a pandemic. And as I've said to people before, um, in seminary, they, there was not a class about Pandemic 101. So we had to really adjust and adjust quickly. Praise God we did. Thanks a lot to, to Stephanie for doing that. And it, it worked. We did well. As a matter of fact, one of my pastor friends said to me, who knew that overnight we'd become televangelists? <laughs> yeah, it was pretty fun, right? But anyways, um, yeah, for, and for you too, I'm sure your life changed. Many of you, your jobs changed and maybe incomes changed and uh, I, you couldn't see family or children or grandchildren. I mean, it's, it's just been... It's been weird, hasn't it? It's been weird. And it's been tiring, and it's been frustrating. And I don't know about you, but I'm like, can't we just go back to the way it was? I'm done with this whole COVID stuff. But who knows when we're going to be able to do that, right? And so we still have that. And then on the heels of that, it seems like the United States erupted in chaos. Um, racism and hate and, and people hating police and uh, people rioting and looting and my goodness, I, I, I mean, it's like what in the world is going on? And you know, I, I sit back and I think about this and the other day somebody was saying, um, Pastor, what do you think is wrong with the world? And I looked at them and said, I know what's wrong with the world and you do too. His name is Satan and it's evil. We, we live in a fallen world. Racism and hatred isn't anything new. The northern kingdom of Israel hated the southern kingdom of Israel and vice versa. The Samaritans and the Jews hated each other. They couldn't stand each other because they were different. Viruses and sickness, well, that's nothing new. You look in the Old Testament and you see illness, you see leprosy. That's nothing new. The world hasn't changed. This is what Satan does. He, since the fall of mankind, since we fell into sinfulness, since we destroyed, destroyed the perfect image of God, Satan has had on his mind that he is going to win the battle because he's dumb, he isn't all-knowing, he doesn't get it, and he will at all costs continue to be, as Scripture says, the prince of this world. He will continue to prowl around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. He will continue to see us in God's wrath, which is his victory, just like our lessons every day, we're not in God's wrath anymore. More, and he will see, continue to see us and want us to be enemies of God. As our lesson for today says, we are no longer enemies of God. The answer to the problems of this world uh, are not long philosophical discussions, my friends. The answers to this world, we don't have to sit around and say, woe is me, what's happening? The answer is very clear, and as God's people, we know that answer, and the answer is Satan. Now, we've said before, we shouldn't blame things on Satan because we're good at sinning on our own, and we are. But when something big like this happens, that's Satan stirring the pot. And our evilness and our evil nature, our evil uh, side of us, uh, uh, our sinful side of us, won't be long to follow, getting caught up in the chaos. I am shocked at what has happened in our country today. How polar and hateful we become to each other. I am sick of watching social media today and seeing, well, if, if you're this party, you're evil. And if you're this party, you're, you're terrible people. And if you believe this, you're evil. And if you believe that, you're not a real person. Brothers and sisters in Christ, the reality is in this world, we're going to disagree with each other. We, all of us have our own opinions, which don't matter too much because you know what they say about opinions, but we have them. And we're going to have different beliefs and we're going to have different sides. And that's okay too. But at the core of it, in this world, we're called to love people. We're called to carry the love of God into this world and even love those who, quite frankly, may be our enemies. After all, at just the right time, when we were God's enemies, Christ died for us, St. Paul says in our lesson for today. When we were God's enemies, he could have turned his back. He could have looked away from us. He was right to do so. We're not. He is. He's God. But he didn't do that. Instead, in love and compassion, he turned towards us, sending his son to die on the cross, to rise for our sins, to make us holy and pure and one in his sight. 
But pastor, I'm just a Christian and I'm human. No excuse. We use that excuse all the time. Yes, we're human and yes, we're sinners. But God calls us to a higher standard. He calls us in baptism to be sanctified believers living out his love and compassion in this world. After all, when God sees you and you and you and you, everyone, he doesn't see an enemy. He sees a precious treasure. So very precious and special in his eyes. And he gave up everything for you and for me. Think about that for a second. The other day I was thinking, what, a, what example can I use in my message of something precious in my life? And maybe you watched Stephanie's little uh, uh, stuff Saturday with Stephanie yesterday. If you haven't, it was really good. They're all really good. Yesterday was really good. And I started looking around at my possessions. And you know what? Yeah, I had Sunny up here for the kids. But I looked around at my possessions. None of them are that precious. I wouldn't die for any of them. As a matter of fact, I get in a mood where I just throw stuff away. I don't keep pictures and memories. I, I, they don't mean anything to me. Maybe part of that's after losing a child. You just realize that what's really precious in this world aren't the material things. You know? Maybe that's it. I don't, I don't know. And I started looking. What's precious? Well, my wife is precious to me. She's a precious treasure. Right? My kids, even though they're in heaven, are a precious treasure. My puppy is a precious treasure. My friends and my neighbors, you know what? I, I wouldn't trade the world. I love where I live now. I have great neighbors. They're a precious treasure too. You guys are a precious treasure to me. I started realizing that if we started to take a step out of this bubble that we live in where Satan's attacking us for a moment and rejoice in the fact that we're precious treasures and we'll get to that in a minute, what we begin to see is that life is really good. Yeah, it really is, because God has died for us. And because he's made us pressure tre precious treasures, we are all precious to one another. I can't live without you. I've learned that very much in the last several months. I don't know if you can live without me. Maybe you can. But I can't live without you. I love you. You're the very reason I get up in the morning to serve you and to tell you about Jesus and to love you and to pray for you. You know? And that's what's precious in our world. But not just you, our community. Just the other day, I was thinking about this sermon. Okay, I'll be honest with you. I'm still really nervous about this virus. Really, I am. I don't know anything. I don't think anybody else does too. We see an article one day from the CDC that says this won't hurt you and then the next day they counteract it and say it does. Contradict and say it does, right? It reminds me back what in the 80s or 90s when they said, oh, eggs are good for you to eat and now eggs are bad for you to eat. You remember those days, right? We don't know anything about this. Let's be honest. We don't. It's okay that we don't. It's brand new. We shouldn't expect to know everything about it. But it causes me a little nervousness and anxiety. And to be honest with you, except to buy a new washer and dryer because ours went out, I haven't been anywhere except church and home. Nowhere. We get everything delivered to our house. So Wednesday evening, the, a deputy sheriff uh, who, we, who works with our congregation called and said, um, we're having a meeting of law enforcement officers from all around the area, and we want you to come and speak to us. And I said, well, okay. He said, we're having a rough time. Many of us want to resign. We want to give up. We, we just don't know what to do. Will you please come? And I said, well... I don't know if I can because I'm afraid of this virus. And it was at a restaurant of all places, right? A restaurant. And I thought about it. And God showed me what was precious. And that was his people who needed the gospel. So I prayed and prayed and prayed. And a lot of you prayed for me. And I walked in that day and I expected to feel anxiety and it was gone. I was floating on cloud nine because of the Holy Spirit. It wasn't me. And the gospel was shared. Luther uh, wrote during the bubonic plague, and this is pretty amazing, right? He said, as much as you can, stay with your own people. They didn't understand how stuff was spread, but stay with your own people. Stay cloistered up. But for the sake of the gospel, when the gospel calls, when people need to be loved, it's time for you to go. It's time for you to go. And he wasn't just speaking to me. He's speaking to all God's people. Because we're all precious treasures and we all have to have each other for the world to be built up, to be carried up. Now, let's go back for a minute, right? If we sit in the darkness of what Satan's doing, and it's easy to do, would you agree? I'm good at that. I'm good at that. I do not watch the news anymore. Unfortunately, I'm on social media all the time and I still read the news, which I probably should stop doing. But I have to stay connected somehow. And I, it's easy to get trapped in this darkness and this anxiety and this worry. And then it's easy to get these opinions, you know, and it, it gets hard. I, it's hard. Living today in today's world is hard. 
Especially when we have armchair media posting all of their advice on Facebook or on Twitter, thinking they know what's best for our society, and if you'd really tear it apart, you're like, oh, you, okay. If you're just like me, you don't know anything either. It's hard. It is hard to live in this world. And it's hard as Satan attacks. And we worry. We worry about our loved ones. We worry about our society. We worry about our government. We worry what's going to happen to our police force. We worry what's going to happen to uh, black people and Hispanic people. We worry about these things, right? Because it does matter. All of it. And that's where Satan wants us. Because if he can keep us there, guess what we're not seeing? That. And if we're not seeing that, the cross... We're not seeing the empty tomb just on the other side. And if we're not seeing the empty tomb on the other side, we're definitely not being pointed to our baptism. And it's in baptism where God came to us in the power of his Holy Spirit to wash our sins away, to regenerate us, to make us into a new creation, to make us his children, and to make us his precious treasures. Right here, the day you were baptized, God made you into his perfect precious treasure and promised never to let you go. My brothers and sisters, when we get out of the, the darkness, the muck, and the mire that is our world today, and we live Listen to St. Paul when he says, fix your eyes on Jesus for the joy who set before him endured the cross. He saw beyond that instrument of death. He saw beyond that instrument of torture. He saw beyond the torture and the hell that he would experience on that cross to the joy on the other side of his resurrection for you and for me so that he could endure that, to get through that so that we might be with him and he might be with us forever. If he can do that by the power of his spirit working in his word and in sacrament, we too who can lift our eyes up to see the joy set before us, overcoming the darkness that Satan puts in our path to be people of joy and love in our world? And this happens because we are precious in God's eyes. Garbage in, garbage out. I've been saying that a lot lately. And if we allow Satan and the world to continue to feed us their garbage, garbage is going to come out. And sometimes that looks like shame directed at ourself. Sometimes it looks, at, it looks like being, being a victim. Sometimes it looks like many other things. But when we surrender and be still and know that God is God, Psalm 4610. When we worship and we fellowship and support each other, we receive the sacrament. When we take time at home to do our daily devotions and to pray and talk to Jesus. When we take time to live out God's calling in our life to love people around us, the darkness goes away. For if we walk in the light, we live as children of the light, the light of Jesus. And his light cannot be overcome. His love cannot be overcome. His grace for you cannot be overcome because you are his precious treasure. So much so that he promises to go to the ends of the earth to bring you back to his joy, his light, his mercy, his love, and his grace. Though the world may be falling around us, Psalm 46 say, though the mountains fall into the heart of the sea, we know that God is our fortress, a very present help in all trouble. And because of that, we're good. We're loved. We're safe. We have eternity. There is precious treasure. Remember that. Let that soak deep into your soul and hold on to it. For it is God's promise to you. And you have already inherited his kingdom. In Jesus' name, amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their need. Lord God, our Heavenly Father, we come before you with praise and thanksgiving for all you've done for us in sending your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, into this world for our complete victory and salvation. For we were your enemies, living in wrath. God, I hear those passages and I can't even, we can't even imagine that. 
We can't imagine that because we've never known that. Because Jesus, because of Jesus, and because of our baptism, because of the faith that you give us. Help us not to live as people who are under wrath because we're not. Help us not to live as people who are your enemies because we're not. Fill us with your victory and your love and remind us every day by putting us in mind of our baptism, which is your seal and promise on our lives that we are your precious treasure. And as your precious treasure, treasure, we are free to live in this world with overwhelming love and power. And as people who can live with overwhelming love and power, we can love everybody. We can love our military. We can love our politicians. We can love those we disagree with. We can love our police officers. We can love every race because it doesn't matter because we are your children called to love in all times. And we thank you for that. Thank you, Lord, in your mercy. And Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for your church throughout the world that as she hears your message today, she will be empowered with your Holy Spirit to rise up in these times to be the beacon of hope and life that she is. For you, Lord Jesus, are the foundation of your church and because you are the foundation, even though the world may fall and crumble around us, we shall stand. We shall stand in the victory of Christ over sin, death, and the devil to proclaim his love and grace. Empower every church everywhere to this mighty task and empower us as your church in this place at Christ Lutheran Church to do your very will and mission right outside our back doors. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for our world. We pray for peace and love in every land, in every nation, in every church, in every home, in every heart. We pray, Lord God, that you will end this virus and that you will bring healing. Continue to give wisdom and skill to all those in the medical profession and all those researching the va vaccine and treatment for this virus that it may come to pass very quickly. Use your gift of medicine that you have given us and we praise you for that. Lord, in your mercy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we pray for our nation. We are blessed to live in this wonderful country and we thank you for the gifts you give us. Help us never to take it for granted. Today, we lift up all those who govern over us at the local, state, and national level. Be with each and every one of them. By the power of your Holy Spirit, work in them love, compassion, and empathy. Give them wisdom and guidance in their governance and use them to your glory and to the benefit, safety, and protection of your people. We thank you so much for all the men and women who serve in the armed forces of our country. They sacrifice so much time with their families, their lives, everything to keep us safe. Be with them and their families. Send your angels to watch over them. Especially we pray for Andy, Colton, Taylor, William, Jonathan, Rich, Bryce, Chase, Hayden, Joseph, and Jordan. Heavenly Father, we also thank you for the first responders right outside our back door who do the very same thing for us every day to keep us safe. For all paramedics and firefighters, police officers and EMTs, and all those in the medical profession. We lift up to you our first responders and we pray for Matt, Raphael, Deidre, Martin, Kelly, Brian, Jeff, Matthew, Mark, and Alexander. Be with these your dear servants and send your holy angels to watch over them and their families. Lift them up and give them courage and strength. Lord, in your mercy. Lord Jesus Christ, in your resurrection you give us victory over sin, death, and the devil and you assure us that our place in heaven has been made. Grant to those who mourn a sure and certain hope of your victory and resurrection. Be with all those who mourn the loss of Betty Valentine and for Audrey Wilson and her family on the loss of her father. Lord Jesus Christ, you are the great and mighty physician. When you walk this earth, you had compassion on those who were sick and ill and you touched your servants with your healing hand. Bless them now and heal them as we lift them to you this day. We pray for Anna, Bill, Michelle, Elliot, Jerry, Frank, Philip, Kenneth, Joel, Jeff, Bob, Tony, Tim, Taylor, and Trish, for Carol and Anthony, for Sunday and Ralph and Lindy and David, Rosa, Dick, Doris, Phil, and Charlie, and Rosa and Linda, Clyde, Charles, Leo, Simona, Albert, Kathy and Randy and Selena, Drew, Isaac, Misty, Joe, Linnell, Wesley, Nick, Carol, Margie, Teresa, Angie, Clem, Ted, June, Larry, the Molina family, and Sandy. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we also lift up our shut-ins to you, Dixie, Florence, Isla, Kay, and Marcy. Bless these, your dear servants, and keep them in your hands with your healing and your strength, and bless all who serve and treat them. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we are honored and certainly blessed to come before you today with our special prayers and requests, knowing that you will hear us and answer our prayer. 
Today we lift up the, the desires and, and, and prayers of your people, Laura, Lori, and Jordan, Emily, David, Richard, Ivy, Suzanne, Chloe, and Jonathan. Lord, during this time there are many who are facing challenging times with their jobs, including unemployment. Open your hand and provide for them. Give them peace and comfort during these days. Especially we pray for John, Tiffany, Chris, and Monica. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we thank you that you have provided for your kingdom and your church and its expansion by providing missionaries to work in this world. Be with all professional missionaries as they carry on your work. Keep them safe and in good health. We pray for especially for Tim and Michelle. We also ask that you bless the members of Christ Lutheran Church as they enter the mission field to do your work. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts, to God we lift them high. Go in peace, serve the Lord, thanks be to God. Now hear the good words of our Lord and receive his blessing upon your life. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Thanks again for joining us in worship today. I'm really glad you're here. I pray that you'll have an awesome week. Be sure to look at Facebook, our YouTube channel, our website for any information you want. All of our releases on devotions and Stephanie time and all of that. And we're, we're, we're glad to be able to connect with you in this way. Don't forget, you can send us prayer requests also via online means or by calling the church. If you need anything, don't hesitate to call and let us know. Your staff is here and we're here to serve you and to love you. You guys have a blessed week. I love you. Bye-bye.
for 